welcome to the show. Today's guest is going to talk about a medical situation that forced her to go out of the country for uh, treatment. Please welcome Bev McGregor. Bev, Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Nancy. So where did, first of all, what was this medical situation you had? Well, I'll step it back. Um, I'm a breast cancer survivor. I had to wait a year after treatment to get a reconstruction. And I was kind of a complex case because I have a pacemaker. Oh. So I'm not able to have uh, Im implants. Right. Uh, so they had to do what they call a tram flap procedure. Okay. And it went horribly wrong. Um, I spent better part of a year and a half with drains out of my body. I, I had 37 trips to the interventional radiology at New Westminster. The drains would plug up, I'd swell up, I'm full of poison. When they do the tram flop, they take part of your abdominal muscle. Okay. They move it up here so they can build a shelf, to kind of put the new breast that is built also from your own flesh from your belly. Oh, okay. So because they've removed that muscle, they have to put mesh to hold everything into place. Okay. So I'm just going to say I had over a year and a half of complex complications, um, not being addressed properly. Meet me in a, you know, a filthy, dirty room at Burnaby Hospital, and she would take a, a large type of syringe is all I could say, but it was very large, and punch a hole in me and drain sometimes two liters of fluid off of me, wow. and then send me home with drains. And I'm like, this this to me, does, it's barbaric. Yeah, yeah. And you try to complain, or you try to get, no one else wants to take on the situation, so you're stuck with who you have. Finally, after over a year of this business, I got so sick um, from infection from the mesh. Right. I spent 147 days in Royal Columbian Hospital. Wow. I almost died. I was given wrong medications uh, because clearly they're too busy. Mm -hmm. um, at this point when I was in there, they, were, they had electricians going down the hallway putting in plug-ins so they could plug in more patients and more bed. And I, I counted that day 23 beds in the hallway, which is a fire hazard. They couldn't right. even bring the gurneys down through. Um, the dirt and the filth uh, in there was disturbing and disgusting. Um, infectious people side by side by side, just passing infection back and forth. And I thought my nightmare was never <laughs> going to yeah. be over. The last surgery, which ended up having 11 in total in that time frame, that 147 days, um, I was her 11th surgery that day. Right. I went in at midnight. Um, she says it was decided not to put mesh back in me at this point, but I truly believe they forgot to put it in me, is what happened. Oh. So she just sewed me together, and that means like my bowels and everything are just pushed in and sewed and with a hope and pray. Well, the next day I coughed. It blew every uh, suture internally open, and I was left with my bowels oh. hanging out of the side of me. And you know, she shortly after that told me she's no longer my doctor. She cannot help me. Wow. Um, she's a plastic surgeon, and this is now what they call an incisional hernia. I was passed around to the top hernia specialist mm -hmm. at um, Royal Columbian. Took me over a year and a half to finally get addressed. So I'm walking around with this thing. Well, you you've seen what yes. it was like. Yes. On my side, I'm trying to work. Right. I'm trying to commute from here. I work right downtown Vancouver, and I, I just couldn't do it anymore. And um, finally, in this all started in 2014. It wasn't until 2017 I got to see the specialist. Uh, he said he would try to repair it. Uh, he put me out. He took a camera. He looked around. He came. He said, there is no way I can repair that mess. You have been totally, whatever she did in there is a catastrophe. I will not touch it. Wow. So here now, I'm waking up thinking it's been done, okay. and I still have, well, I named it El Humpo because it <laughs> I was remember with that. me for so <laughs> I long. I remember that, yeah. El Humpo was growing, and uh, I was in a size 22 to 24 pants just to pull it over this hump. Oh. 
I get a new doctor because my favorite doctor left town. But all he could see was looking at me is that he told me I was obese and that all my problems were because I was obese. And I said, you don't know anything about me. Right. You haven't read my file. Right. And you're just assuming I said, you don't know my story. Right. We're going to stop it right there, okay? And we'll be right back. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned because there's much more to come. I want to know about you. We hope you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. In the meantime, peace out. I wanna know about you, your life's story. Well, we're back, and I'm talking with Meg, Bev McGregor, and she's going to continue her story uh, with what is happening to her medically. So, okay, so the doctor, the last doctor you saw at that point said he just assumed you were obese, right? That's correct. Yes, I am. I am not thin, <laughs> but this is not my problem. I can tell you, like, look, I'm toxic. I'm full of something is not right. right and yeah. clearly nobody wants to take any responsibility. So the next surgeon uh, sort of went down that same path going from the referral from my doctor. And I said, I don't need someone to tell me how to lose weight. I need someone to fix this. Right. And um, I just got passed around and passed around for almost uh, four and a half, five years. Well, oh. it is five years because it's since 2014. And I met on my journey a beautiful soul named Jim McElwain. And he has been by my side through all of these things. And we went to Mexico and I just had this, I had kind of a dream before I went that I need to find someone outside of Canada to help me and uh, it's funny once you have that thought the things that come across your path and I was speaking to a person that uh, works at my bank and she told me this story about her brother-in-law who had this mesh and had terrible problems eight nine years in and out of hospital but he ended up going to Mexico I go no way I just started thinking about maybe that's where I should go right where did he go well she didn't have the information because unfortunately he had passed but she said it was somewhere in Puerto Vallarta so that's where I started my search I thought I'm going to Puerto Vallarta I had um, people come forward, thank you to Shelly and Keith who um, donated me a condo. So everything started falling into place to go on this journey. I met with the surgeon, I came back, I did my due diligence, I checked websites, I checked his name to see if there was anything and nothing but glowing reports. Now here's the kicker. The infection rate in Canada is very high, I can't just remember the exact statistic right now. It's gone out of my head but in Mexico in this place it was called San Mar Medical Clinic it's 0.005 percent wow. infection spotlessly clean you have your own room right everything is I, I can't even tell you how clean and how um, professionally trained every single person there is I decided on doctor I'm going to say his name because Absolutely. he saved my life. Okay. His name is Dr. Amanda Hoya. Hoya. Uh, and he specializes in hernia repair and also in gastric bypass, that kind of surgery. He's, he had never seen such a massive hernia. Right. And he said, yes, I believe I can. So I made arrangements to go back. Um, that was at spring break last year. Right. And we went back this summer for, for two months and I checked into the hospital. They do things totally different. They detox your body. They, he said, absolutely before any surgery, your liver, everything has to be in good shape. Right. We're gonna put you on a detox 12 days prior to surgery. I'm kidding you not. I have never felt so good since after I completed that. Right. From 12 days till I went to surgery, 18 pounds totally gone. Nice, eh? Yeah, uh, but the surgery was very complex. Right. He had a uh, total four surgeons working on me, and um, it still took them nine hours. He had to call in backup, emergency backup, because my bowels had grown so far into my abdominal wall. He said I was days away from dying. Unreal. That they would have just exploded, and wow. I would have been full of poison that nobody could have done. I had no idea. Nobody here 
told me or seemed to care. That's what got me the most. Right. Was that no one here, they didn't care enough. You get five minutes and then you got to say your whole spill. There, you're treated like a human being. Mm -hmm. There's none of this, I'm the doctor, you're the patient down here. They listen. He's writing a letter on my behalf to the College of Stop writing. College here that right. I can give them with his opinion and his findings. Right. Um, nobody, I, I could have died like that. That Stop and think about that for yeah, a minute. And, 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 and here you are. Two weeks after surgery, I could get into a size 12 pant. Compared to the 22. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but That's oh okay. my God, it's a riveting story. It really is. And I, I, I look forward to seeing where you take it from, you know, on your own, right? Yes. So thanks so much for coming. Thank you for show. having me. I'm just glad to be here and well. And yes. if, uh, if anybody is suffering or going through something like I am, I'm willing to help. They okay. can contact me through here. Okay. And then you can forward them to me because um, That's wonderful. I'll help anyone who's going through a battle like this. Awesome. Thanks, Beth. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Peace out. Yeah.